Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Fun and Games Podcast. I'm Jeff Moonen. And I'm Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon. And Matt and I have a distinct problem. Not distinct to us. Distinct to gamers. We have too many games. Yeah, it's something that... The, the Growing up as a kid, I feel like, when I had a Nintendo and a Sega Genesis, like that era, and a Super Nintendo, I got games infrequently enough, because it wasn't based on my own income, that, you know, I played the same game over and over again until I found another game and was able to get it three months later or whatever it is. So I never really had, like I had, eventually I had a lot of games for those systems, but I never felt like I had a lot of games that I either haven't finished or that I never played. Whereas in modern gaming... Thanks to the beauty of Steam, which is the larger culprit, culprit but not the only. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a Steam library of 88 games or 89 games, and I've probably played half of them and completed a fourth of them. Um, and then, of course, you have Xbox Live, uh, PlayStation Plus, and then eventually the Switch's version of that, that also give you two free games a month, which... I know I haven't played most of those. Neither I have I. The two free games a month. And so we wanted to chat a bit about this idea of huge back catalogs because it's a running gag with anyone I know who has a Steam account that they have a ton of games and they haven't played most of them. Right. I mean, as gaming has matured and evolved in as a uh, as a medium, as a hobby, as a what have you, um, you just... You know, the number of games don't diminish. It only grows. So, right. you know, you, you, you either collect for old systems like I do or you just like to keep up with things and you gamed as a kid and now you're an adult and you have, yes, that disposable income. And the digital age and digital distribution has made it really straightforward for there to be sales. Now, I remember when I was in high school and did not have much disposable income, a little, but not much. Um, popping into software, etc., Babbage's, Funko Land, GameStop, and finding when they would have like, you know, buy two used games, get one free or little sales like that. And that's mm-hmm. how I would stock up on PS1 titles and, and, and the like. Now, you would only see those sales maybe if you get an email or if you just go there. Brick and mortar means you, you only see it while you're there. But not just the fact that you can get these uh, that you can get software instantly by downloading it, but you also get the deals instantly. You get email updates that let you know when a sale is going on. You have, you know, you're on the mailing list of Humble Bundle. You check the Steam page, anything like that. Uh-huh. And very instantly, here are some deals. And, you know, uh, uh, gamers are not the first group of consumers to be taken in by the, oh, but it's so cheap. It'll never be this cheap. I need to get it at this price. Were you going to get it at full price? Not really. But why are you going to get it now? Look at how cheap it is. Well, yeah. I mean, also the Steam sales in particular, like they dropped the prices of those games pretty heavy. And now that they have a lot more retro games, like, so for the winter sale this year, I, um, I got four games for 30 bucks. I got the Stick of Truth. Um, Transistor, which is by the guys who did Bastion. I got um, Resident Evil 4, which I had never played and always wanted to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dark Souls 3, because I like playing it. I like punishing myself with my friends online, not so much on my own. Of those four games, I've finished two of them already, which is a record, considering the amount of time that has passed. But I blew through Resident Evil 4 because I fell in love with it, and The Stick of Truth was just so easy and fun to play. Mm -hmm. Like, it just kept me hooked. But that said, previous Steam sales, like, I bought, like, six games for 20 bucks because all the Sonic titles were a buck each. And so even the not as good Sonic titles, it was kind of worth it to get for a buck because I never played them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like... It's it the, that kind of stuff absolutely pulls you in, but I think also for me because now as an adult, it's also impossible to keep up with all of the media that's releasing constantly. Yeah, that going back is definitely more common than when we were kids, where like it was it was physical physically required for you to get the cartridge. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it was out of print, or at, eventually it wasn't available, and so you couldn't have it. 
You know, like the only things that are physically necessary now as a PC owner is to buy a PC, which there's no release issue with. Um, if you're a console gamer, then they're still getting the new console when it comes out, which can be trying. But once you have it, like I have two Switch games that are physical copies, Zelda and Mario, because Zelda and Mario. Zelda and Mario. Everything else is digitally downloaded. And now that I have 120 gig, 28 gig micro SD card in it, I have a ton of space. So I'm not going to buy anything. So that way I can carry my whole library of games with me because that's portable. So it makes total sense. And that's probably one of the other big factors in almost like stumbling into a huge backlog and not realizing it. Because you're not getting the physical copies and because it's so easy to get large amounts of storage to, you don't, you're not looking at a physical bookshelf and seeing how many discs, cartridges, and cases you have. You There's a list. And right. what's a list really? Uh, in a physical sense, not much. And, you know, if you've got such a large SD card, which why not? Memory's cheap. Get it. Um, you end up in a state where you can just fill it. And then once you've filled it, um, I think you hit on a really good point before, Matt, with, you know, when you when we were kids and we only had a few cartridges or a few games at a time, we really played those games. Um, yeah. If you can download six games in a single bundle or you, you know, for 25 bucks, get, you know, four or five games, you're going to like, and they're all on that same SD card or they're all on your PC or they're all wherever, you're just going to cycle through them. Maybe one catches your fancy so strongly that you will keep playing it until it is done or whatever but for the most part you're just going to kind of flit at them you're going to you're going to treat them like it's a buffet and not like you're sitting down for a gourmet meal yeah it's interesting versus other media like for me with music and with tvs and movies for the most part if i like a season of a show i'll binge through it pretty quick now in modern media mm -hmm. that's happening less because i have less time for tv or i'm choosing other media over it but like for music for me i would always buy a cd listen to it over and over and over again buy another cd listen to it over and over again like i liked memorizing songs and track lists it's just how my brain works same so that that i never really had that disconnect of having so much music and never any time to listen to now of course with media libraries and spotify i don't know every song ever made ever though i could um because there's only so many hours in the day. But for example, I own eight PS4 games. Um, I got my PS4 as a wedding present almost three years ago. Mm -hmm. My three-year wedding anniversary will be this May. Congratulations. So two and a half years ago. Thank you. Um, totally just fishing for that. Um, no worries. And out of those eight games, I've completed, like, gotten everything in zero of them. But if we're going to talk just finishing games as far as meaning just beating them, because not everybody's a completionist, I've finished one, Arkham Knight. Every other game I own, I have not finished. I've gotten close to some. Like, I have the Uncharted collection, and I beat the first two Uncharted, and I haven't beat the third one yet. Mm -hmm. But, like, that just goes to show how few games I've completed. Um, you know, the Switch, it's been a little different because I have a couple games that can't really be completed, like Mario Kart and uh, Splatoon 2. Oh, they can be completed, but not to that extent. Not like in the sense where you have like a 100% save file or something that you can right. point to and be like, here it is. You know, here's the little uh, the dot on the eye. Right. But like I finished Zelda and Mario, definitely not completed them because mm -hmm. um, that's going to take 30 years. Um, ukulele, I'm almost done, but I'm struggling to find those last pages because I think I've burned out on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I just started Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is a massive game, and I've kind of put it on hold for now because I just needed a break, I think, from certain kinds of games. Yeah. Um, I've been playing a lot more, like, uh, and also, all of this considered with libraries, it just occurs to me, I'm also leaning more into games that don't have an end, matchmaking games, games that you play online, mm -hmm. because I like listening to podcasts, duh, uh -huh. um, and I can do that with a non-narrative game. And so with games like Heroes of the Storm and League of Legends, Dota, you know, Call of Duty, uh, Destiny, mm -hmm. Halo, whatever that has an online competitive, Oh yeah, those don't really ever end because there's always loot boxes or some other MacGuffin to get. Yes. Um, and so that also occupies your time. So it's even harder to complete games because of games like that that definitely didn't exist when we were kids. And a lot of design nowadays, uh, we were talking a bit about the notion of uh, games as revenue stream. And right. even if they're not necessarily quite so 
coldly mercenary or capitalist is that a lot of them are built like that. I mean, uh, that that certainly has put a damper on me finishing a lot of games on my 3DS because I really enjoy Pokemon Shuffle. So I played a good amount. And I just recently, this week, uh, purchased a copy of Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call, which is a game I've wanted for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And because I look at it and it hits every checkbox, I'm like, well, I'm really interested in this. I found it. It was $8. And I got it. And I started playing it. I'm like, oh, man, this is going to take so many hours. And right. that's another thing. It, it is a little easier to binge watch a season of television or listen to an album because it takes the same amount of time to experience it every time. You, yes. You can't speed run dark side of the moon you can tr- <laughs> i mean if it's a vinyl you sort of can you sort but- of can you know what you're right <laughs> i take that back but typically if you're enjoying it or if you're you know you're not if you're fast forwarding your way through parks and recreation or brooklyn 99 um you're not getting the whole experience and right um and you're, you're watching that for the narrative and it's and it's exactly as long that episode is always exactly as long uh some games could take an hour. Some of them could take hundreds of hours. And sometimes that could even be within the same game. So I think that little bit of a, like, I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know how much more I've got of it can definitely make it a bit daunting. And when you've only got a few games and you don't know how long it's going to take, you're like, all right, well, I'm just going to chip away at these. When you've got even a dozen games, let alone dozens, where it's like, well, these could take any amount of time. You're like, well, now what? And you almost don't play any of them. So, yeah, I mean, I think for me also, like, so certain games can hold my attention. If they hook me the right way, I'll never stop playing them. Right. Um, But that said, there are so many games that ride the middle. Like, it's not like, so, for example, the newest Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 15, I was enjoying, and then I stopped playing. Mm -hmm. And I do want to go back to... But it just, I hit this weird point where I wasn't super into it in that exact moment. And then something else drew my attention. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and I think the reason that my, personally, my library has gotten so huge is just because of that fact that I tend to be, have a little bit of ADD with gaming. But also, gaming will always be a community experience first for me. Yes. I've played a lot of video games by myself, but I find when I'm sitting at home alone, and none of my friends are online, I'm less likely to just turn on a game and play it, unless it was something like Zelda or Mario, where I was super into it and I couldn't wait to get to it. Mm -hmm. I tend to sit. You know, it's why I prefer to play on PC, because a lot of my closest friends who don't live near me anymore, we play more games online than anywhere else. Right. And I'd much rather play uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 with three of my friends for four hours than play some narrative-driven game by myself for an hour. Um, and, and so that also pushes things back because if I'm really into, for example, right now, let's say Transistor on the PC and I'm playing it and then my friends pop online and ask what I'm up to, I'm going to turn it off and go play something with them, even if it's a game we've played a thousand times. Yeah. And trying to push through a game in a multiplayer way is very difficult. And for anyone who's ever tried to schedule a regular D&D game or is part of Ugh. a ska band will know how difficult it is to get several people's schedules to all overlap and get anything done. Yeah. Uh, I speak from personal we, experience. Yeah, same. Uh, my actual tabletop D&D gaming that I still do online because none of us live local anymore, we do it once a month maybe. Mm-hmm. And we have three concurrent games going. But because the DMs of these different games are also players in the other games, it's like we have to alternate and it's just... With all of our conflicting schedules, it's like, if we can find a Saturday with five hours open, we'll play. Otherwise, it sits for a while. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, it's the same thing with, with, with digital gaming as well. I think for me also, like, I used to be a much bigger, and we talked about this a bit in the Achievements episode. Mm-hmm. I used to be a much bigger completionist. When yeah. I was younger and had more time, I guess, mm-hmm. I used to sit and just play games and play games and play games. But, like, I've kind of evolved past that in a sense that sure if i'm really into something and obsessed with it i can sink a whole day into it yeah but otherwise i have enough self-aware awareness as a sort of adult that you know i could be doing other things and because i also generate content and i'm a dj and i'm doing all this other stuff besides my day job it's like 
well, sh- can I play this game or should I be doing literally anything else I can do? And I think that comes from also just the media oversaturation in general. Mm-hmm. Like I watch, I used to watch a lot of TV and over the last year I dropped five shows that I was watching all the time because I just felt overwhelmed by the amount of content. Yeah, it's a lot. And I think one of the big steps that should be taken is, and this isn't like a community-wide, this isn't a, a, an industry-wide, this is, I feel, on an individual level. We need to start to shift how we how we sort of organize our time or organize how, how we look at these games, how we look at our experiences with them. Um, something that, I don't remember if I said it in our uh, year in review, but a sort of resolution that I've made is I am trying to be a game every week. It doesn't have to be a game I've never beaten before. It can be it can be an old favorite, but it is trying to once a week finish a game, and that some sometimes are easier than others. And I'm I'm keeping on track so far. I mean, it's only uh, we're only getting into February here, and that's a nice little thing of uh, looking at New Year's resolutions. Are we keeping them up? And something interesting about it is, yeah, I, as a collector of retro games, I will often find good deals and pick up games or ones that I have like an interest in or like, oh, yeah, I've always wanted to play that. And now I have it so I can play it whenever I want. But when you can play it whenever, when are you going to start? And so this kind of gets me really thinking about, all right, how am I going to finish a game this week? And I, and I don't have to start it the same week I finish it. I just have mm-hmm. to finish one a week. So if I've got a big game that like, all right, this is going to take dozens of hours, let me start it. And let me do that on the console. And let me finish some handheld games for now or vice versa. You know, because we game in so many different ways or we can. I, I certainly, I've got my, you know, bloated uh, console set up on my TV at home and I've got uh, several handheld systems. So I can kind of, I can easily keep two games going at once possibly three or more, depending upon which systems I'm rotating through or if I'm playing a two-player game with somebody. And it's been really nice to kind of have that organization. And it's also really easy to lose track of our backlog if we don't take a hand in organizing it a little bit. I mean, gaming is, for many of us, a hobby. And an aspect of that is a little bit of a I, I, I don't know, list making or a little bit of like kind of organizing things. You know, if you are uh, if, if you paint miniatures, you keep your paints in all sorts of places and you make sure you have enough of them and you have all the proper tools. If you uh, restore cars, you kind of uh, you, you make sure everything is in its place. or You know what's going on there. If you collect other forms of art, you want to make sure that you're not buying the same thing twice or trying to find the version that you want or how or anything else like that. And so I feel like that will also help a little bit in terms of backlog. It certainly has helped me. Um, like I, uh, about a month or so ago, started a massive Excel document that is now a Google Sheet. That is, I'm still not done putting it together. I do a little bit every day. And as, it, as things change, it changes. I have made a massive Excel document that is sort of the master game list or like the 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 log of my collection. So I've got everything by game title, what platform I have it for, uh, when it was originally released, just for fun fun extras, what version of it do I have? Is it uh, an original version? Is it Greatest Hits, a Nintendo Select? Uh, is it, if it's Zelda, is it a gold or a gray cartridge? Uh, do I have it in box? Do I have the manual? How much did I pay for it? Um, has it been completed? If so, by whom? Myself or my wife. Uh, and has it been 100 percented? And what franchise is it part of? And how many copies of that game do I have? <laughs> well, because there's a couple of times where I uh, I helped somebody clear out a basement, and they're like, "Any video games you find are yours." And I got some really good finds there. I got a copy of Lunar 2 for PS1. Uh, like it's missing the pendant that comes with it, but other than that, I have everything. Um, mm-hmm. I got an I got Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. I got a copy of Aladdin for the Genesis. For those past four games, I already have other copies, but it's nice to have backups because sure. physical media can degrade or things can happen. And I, you know, it's not like I have 10 of them. Having a right. few extra is pretty nice. And for Final Fantasy 7, I have three copies, one of which is Greatest Hits, two of which are Black Label. 
Um, I don't have a perfect list of how much I paid for everything, but certainly as I get new games, I can put that in to get an idea of how much I'm I'm paying for this. How much uh, how much use am I getting out of it? As well as making a list of which games I've borrowed from people, which games I've lent out, um, what games I want. I haven't put in digital games yet. I actually haven't put a single digital game in here. My Steam library is not on here. None of my PS Plus stuff, but I've got just about, I may be missing a handful of physical titles within my home. And I'm looking at the list right now. I have 515 physical games. Jeebus. Yeah. So that, um, and so it's nice to look at that and realize, wow, that's, that's a lot of games. How many of these have I finished? How many of these have I played? Have I enjoyed my games? Yes. If I'm not playing all of them, am I not enjoying the hobby? That's not necessarily. I can still very much enjoy my hobby while slowly chipping away at this. And does right. this mean I can't buy new games? No, but take a look at what you've already got. This certainly will prevent me from rebuying games. And because, again, 515 games, and some of them I acquired but haven't played yet. And I'm like, wait, did I get that yet? Or did I just really want to? It's, it's nice. And that's, just, that's one way I log things, and I'll probably do some others. I mean, Matt, you just started away, correct? Yeah, so, um, and this is not a paid sponsor, ad but not you know, at all but this is something we were talking not, about <laughs> hashtag not a sponsor mm. um but uh it's a, a website called groovy that i have to give credit to dan colonna who is a recent guest on autographs and who is a uh brothers in arms of gaming podcasts he's one of the members of the dinosaur machines game club podcast here, um, here. he shared it with me um online earlier this week it's called groovy G R. O O U V E E or something like that. I think it's just one um, O's. Yeah, it's G R O U V E E. I think. Um, and it's essentially Goodreads for gaming. Now, if you don't know what Goodreads is, Goodreads is a way to track books that you've read, what you thought of them, you rate them, review them, and you can kind of keep a digital library of just what you've done. Groovy is the same thing, but for gaming, and not just modern gaming. It spans everything. The database is huge, and so I started one on. Tuesday, I believe. And since then, I've added like 30 games. Um, you know, it's been nonsense. Like it, it set off my OCD. But it's a new enough service that people are commenting on my reviews saying they're helpful or talking about their experience, which has been pretty cool. Because um, we're all about community here. It. Right. So I highly recommend it. Um, I've shared it on my social medias, but I'll do it again. And I can share it on the Fun and Games page as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm under Stormageddon. Um, and yeah, it's been really great. Um, you know, it's fun to kind of rethink about games. And there's a five-star system, which has its flaws, but like I'm trying to be as honest as possible. Yeah. But like the real perspective I got is when I rated the entire Mass Effect trilogy, I gave the first one a three, the second one a five, and the third one a four. And it truly reflects my now past experience. When I first played the first Mass Effect, I thought it was a five because the story was amazing. Mm -hmm. Going back to it now, it's like, wow, these controls are shite. This is terrible. And um, you, you do have to come at it with a modern perspective. We're, we're not in 2009 anymore. But just the same, I think I gave, was it the X-Men Arcade, a five-star rating because that thing is flawless for the half hour it entertains you. Oh, yeah. You know, I have no complaints about that. Um, There's an arcade cabinet been, in Chelsea that I still play. Um, and that's been a really cool thing. It's like, so I'm a board gamer as well. And I have an app on my phone that allows me to track um, if I've played a certain board game, who I played it with, how many times I've played it. I mostly use it as a running list to just see what games I've played. Um, but I like having that kind of information at my disposal because it, it I don't know, helps me wrap my brain around it Yeah, uh, a little better. Um, but it's funny. I want to go back to something you were mentioning earlier also as far as game libraries and playing games. Oh, yeah. You can play games simultaneously. You can mm -hmm. have multiple playthroughs of games going at once. That's a skill I don't really have. If I'm playing a game, it's the focus. Unless I play some other multiplayer game with friends, usually I'm playing one game at a time. And it's weird. Like I try to play multiple games and switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, there's just something about my focus. Like, for example, I said earlier, I just bought Xenoblade uh, Chronicles, Chronicles 2 um, at the recommendation of Scoop Jessica, who's uh, a friend of mine on the internet and who follows us. Um, and I started it and I really liked it. But then I realized, oh, I haven't finished Ukulele. And so I think my brain's been in this lock of if I play my Switch, which do I play? Also, 
the subways have been way overcrowded, so I can't really play it on the go anymore, which mm-hmm. has really been what hurt me. But like even when I was playing Resident Evil 4 on the computer, I had a Switch in my lap that I could be playing, and I was like, eh, I want to play this computer game from 10 years ago. Um, so I, I just can't split my attention that way, and it's, it's driving me a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I, similarly to, to you, Jeff, I want to also complete a lot of games this year. Yeah. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do it a week because I just, I can't. That's fine. But but I definitely want to try and complete at least a game a month, if not more. Mm -hmm. And also, something that I've done some research on um, that I've done in the past but haven't done in a few years that I know you've heard of, Extra Life. Yes. Um, For those who don't know what Extra Life is, it's a 24-hour gaming marathon where... um, it's sort of like a, an AIDS walk or something like that where someone sponsors you per mile, but this, it's people sponsor you per hour. They can give more, but the minimum donation recommended is a dollar per hour, and you play games for 24 hours straight. And it can be any games, board games, video games, D&D, whatever. Um, and it's all to benefit children hospitals across the United States. Yeah. And I you did it two years in a row. I think it was 2013 and 2014. And in 2014... I raised eleven hundred dollars nice. for an Albany Children's Hospital, and I haven't done it in a while just because conflicting schedules, whatever. But it's I believe November third this year, and I plan to do it again. I plan to stream it, um, and that's where I think I'm going to dive in and complete a lot of games. Hmm. When I did it two or three years ago, however long that was now, I completed Bastion for the first time during that. Uh-huh. I completed my third playthrough of Mass Effect three during that. Wow. Like it just it allowed me to sit and go, all right, I've given myself the excuse that I am doing nothing but video games for 24 hours mm-hmm. or gaming in general. What do I want to play? What do I want to finish? I, w- um, I would love to join you for that this year, if that's all right. Yes, I absolutely. We can create a fun and games team because you can also create teams and partnerships. And so that way you can uh, also take a nap. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, but, uh, you know, and of course you're allowed bathroom breaks and time to eat and stuff. Um, the last time I did it, my wife was wonderful. Like she made all my meals for me and brought them to me while I was playing whatever I was playing. Um, but yeah, and we can either do it in the same space or just talk online while we're streaming. Um, but you can do it solo or do a team goal and then that team goal goes to something. And so, yeah, I think that a fun and games uh, team goal for uh, Albany's Children's Hospital would be really awesome. Yeah, I'm in. Um, and uh, but yeah, that was one of my favorite ways to complete games and get through my backlog because it's you know you're doing it for charity, which you know of course is always wonderful. Mm-hmm. But then you've also mentally given yourself the excuse, okay, I'm not doing anything else today except playing some kind of game, with the exception of D and D and Magic the Gathering and whatever else. What uh-huh. video games am I playing today? Right. And it's it's kind of nice to have lists and have things like that, so you can look and go, all right. Because when you have so many games and when you have such a library or such a backlog, you can almost forget that you have certain games that you were so excited about when you got them, but didn't right. get the chance to play them at the time. So it's it's kind of a nice, well, because, yeah, I definitely take days or I'll take uh, an hour or so and try to go like, all right, let me play something. What should I play? That could almost take as much time. Um, anybody who cooks for themselves knows that there is a great amount of time and energy and effort that goes into meal planning that goes into, you know, even just figuring out what do I want to eat? It it, it does take a lot. And the same thing goes for what do I want to play? Especially if you're trying to push through a backlog or play something new, it's very easy to play the familiar. Um, I think one of the reasons I put the release date of games on my, uh, on my list is it's very easy also to go like, eh, that's a pretty recent game, and then realize, no, no, it came out in 2007. That was over 10 years ago. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, wh- whether or not you want to do that or you really do want to play a recent game, it's like, no, no, something after 20, 2016 or later, come on, and t- take those on. And having a little bit of a uh, a want-to-beat list might be might be pretty handy. These are these are things I'm throwing out. These are thoughts that I'm even just having now. We're like, hey, maybe I should do that. Like I've I've become a very big fan of the website howlongtobeat.com, which is a great place where you can put in just about any game you can think of. I haven't stumped it yet. I haven't tried, but I haven't stumped it yet. And it will give you sort of a breakdown of how long it will take to beat the main story, to get all the extras, to like get a true 100% file. 
um, like an average amount, like whether it's, uh, you know, it's six hours to beat the game, but it'll take about 15 hours to 100% it or whatever else. And then you can also calculate your, your effort, your time, your investment a little more wisely with a little more forethought as well. It's not just grab a game, play it, hope it works. Like, right. And I think that's a really brilliant thing to do. The better prepared you can make yourself to engage in this stuff, the the more likely you are to not flounder under the pressure of getting stuff done. It's why I haven't played a lot of first, um, not first person, um, open world games besides the new Zelda because, mm-hmm. like, I loved Skyrim. I loved its death. I've played it so many times. But now when I try and go back to it, I look at all the things I have to do and go, nope, too much responsibility. I'm done. I got to go play Street Fighter or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But also, um, I think a systemic problem with overflowing libraries of any media, but especially gaming, since that's what we're here to talk about, is is modern time management is almost impossible. It's complicated. I have an electronic calendar for my personal and uh, performance stuff, DJing, hosting, all of that stuff. I have a calendar for work where I help my boss manage his time and because my muggle job is an executive assistant. Just the sheer amount, as we said earlier, of media there is to consume versus hours in the day, you know, just makes it so overwhelming and impossible. Mm -hmm. And I think we're a generation that we're just on the cusp of the physical planner and the PDA. So we we know how to manage our time somewhat. But anyone younger than us, I think, is just kind of overwhelmed by all of the media. Like, it was was interesting. So this is kind of a tangent. Whatever. But... I was coming home from therapy uh, yesterday. I le- I go in the middle of the day. I, I my from my I'll leave from my day job, go and then come back. And I forgot to charge my phone, and so I was able to listen to music on the way. But on the train ride back, which is only about a half hour, um, and the wait for a train is usually only five ten minutes, um, my phone was dead, and so. I literally had nothing. I didn't bring a charger with me. I didn't bring my switch with me. I left it at the office. I had, you know, I had to be a normal kid in the 90s and have (laughs) literally nothing. And so waiting for the train, I stood there thinking, I can't remember the last time I waited for something. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is we don't, like, I remember as a kid waiting for a train was excruciating because you just stood there. Mm -hmm. It was so boring. Yep. But. Now we have so much media to to fiddle with that there's no real feeling of waiting. And so it was just such a foreign experience to wait for the train, get on the train, sit on the train, and then walk to the office, all with no form of distraction. And I'm not trying to, like, denounce all of the media we have, but it was just this realization that it's just the experience of engaging with this kind of stuff is so different now because we're always preoccupied. And it's... For, for those with an anxious disposition, um, it can be a bit maddening in terms of you feel as though time like that is wasted time when it really isn't. We should allow right. ourselves some time to to let the mind wander, to just... We, uh, I think Neil Gaiman ha- uh, was uh, one who had said a wonderful piece about the value of being bored. It's nice to yes. do. and. Uh-huh. But but just the same, yeah, we're, we sit there with, like, we need to, to maximize our time. We need to everything else. And there's also the idea of changing how you engage with your collection uh, in terms of it's we rarely as adults, um, Matt and I speaking as men in our 30s of it's difficult to find those like five hour, six hour marathon gaming sessions anymore. Hell, 10, 12 hour uh, gaming sessions. Final Fantasy seven came out when I was in middle school. It was a thing. And (laughs) what was it a thing? But I've also made my way through a lot of games by playing for half an hour before I leave for work. I get up, I take a shower, I stretch a little, I make some coffee, I sit down and I turn on whatever it is I'm playing and I get through. One of the nice things is modern games these days, they do the saving for you. Very often you will get to a new area, it will save. You could forget to save and you won't lose that much progress. It will update that for you. And while I think there's also that old idea of like, no, no, I got to get to another significant thing before I save or, you know, for this to be worth it. No, you got to the next area. You got a little further. You beat a couple of waves of enemies. You you got a little further. You know, beating, 
I'm trying to beat 52 games this year. Matt, you're trying to beat 12. Uh, at aside a minimum, from, yeah. Yeah, at a, at a minimum. I mean, hey, if I beat multiple games in a week, whoa, happy days. But, right, exactly. But, the, but this, these, are the, these are the goals that are set. And, you know, is that going to completely thrash our backlogs? Not at all. It, it might, you know, depending upon if I find a good sale or something like that, 52 games this year might not even beat the amount of games I acquire this year. Um, but it's still something. It still chips away, and it's still enjoyable. I'm, we're doing it to enjoy the games, and backlog panic can sometimes ruin a good hobby. Yeah, no, totally. And I think that's something that I'm trying to wrap my head around a little more this year is like, just because I don't finish one game doesn't mean I can't go to another game and start playing that. Yeah. Um, but it's just, you know, you get excited about the next thing coming out. And of course, I'm buying less games than I ever bought before because there's just so many mm -hmm. and I only have so much time. Right. But I'm trying to let myself go, okay. You know, I'll play these online games, but I also want to focus on this game. I want to go back to that game. Like, so many people I know have raved about Final Fantasy 15, saying mm -hmm. it's fantastic. And I just got so bored. But I feel like uh, maybe I didn't give it a fair shake. There are plenty of games that I never finished that I need to go back to. Like, it's funny. As much as I say I'm a Final Fantasy fan, the only Final Fantasies I've finished, and this is going to seem horrendously sad, okay. is... Uh, seven, mm -hmm. uh, one, mm -hmm. sort of, because you can finish, sort of finish one. Um, uh, eight, uh -huh. 12 was offline. Yeah, 12. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Um, I haven't, I never finished nine and I went back to it recently and I want to try and finish it because I, I thought it was terrible, but it's the same way I thought Wind Waker was terrible because mm -hmm. I looked at the change in graphics and went, Psh, this is for kids. Yeah. Babies. Um, cause I was an idiot. Yeah. Um, no, Final Fantasy nine is pretty sophisticated. Yeah. And so I, I want to go back and finish it, but I haven't finished 15. I mm. haven't, I never finished 10. <laughs> Another slight tangent. My biggest gripe with 10 is the le the Sphere Grid is one of the best leveling systems ever made if you follow some of the rules. Okay. But the problem is if you, like me, get a ton of teleport spheres and literally halfway through the game teleport everyone's spheres to other places, it breaks everyone's class and makes the game unplayable. Um, huh. I screwed it up so bad that one of my best friends, Matt Karen, came over and he said, don't worry, I'll fix it. Because he got me into Final Fantasies and he was always someone who was better at strategizing at some games than I was. Right, right. He came over, took one look at the sphere grid and went, nope, you're done. Start over. And I was like, <laughs> what? So, yeah. Oh so my, I didn't know you could screw it up that bad. Wow. I didn't either. Apparently, I don't know. I And I don't, Man, I don't know that, if that I still impressive. have that copy. Yeah, I know, oh, right? Oh, my God. Was it the PS2 or the, uh, the re-release? The PS2, but I have the re-release version on my Steam list because I do eventually want to go back and play it. I feel like it's been so long. And, and I imagine, would, yeah, the re-release probably is a bit better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also, like, I love playing RPGs now, but as a kid, I did not strategize well. Besides mm -hmm. Chrono Trigger, I was not great at, uh, at RPGs, whereas uh -huh. now I engage with them very differently and I'm way more analytical than I used to be. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, and back in those days, it was like, I'm going to poke my stick at things until they fall over and then we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but, but with that, so that's a game that sat in my backlog unfinished since it came out. Yeah. And so things like that, like I look to and want to go back. Like I recently got Day of the Tentacle remastered on Steam. Oh, nice. Um, because it was part of a Humble Bundle. And that's a game that I finished years ago when i played it but lord i probably could dive into it now and not remember where any of the puzzle solving is and also it's the remaster they might have altered a few things just to uh, right. keep you on your toes um, i haven't played it yet so so yeah so it's it's one of those things where my backlog is not only new games or older games that i bought that i never played but also games that i've never finished that i've had for years um right you know it, it, a friend of mine very recently finished I, it might have been a few years ago now, but he finished the original Legend of Zelda, a thing he could never do as a kid. And mm -hmm. he did it without a strategy guide. He oh, just wow. figured it out, which is not easy. No, it's um, not. So, you know, it's accomplishments like that that I do want to go back and do. Like, um, like, I would never do this because I don't steal games and I have no idea what these emulators are. But I'm told 
if you use emulators, you can download old video games and use the save state function to literally just save the game where you're standing, whether there's a save point or not. And so some of those older, harder RPGs, you can take advantage of that. Um, I'm about to commit a Final Fantasy crime. I've never played Final Fantasy VI. That's, that ain't no crime. It, it's one of those things where every, that's the one that everyone's like, it's better than seven, And I believe it. And I've been reading up on it. And I'm like really should play that and then it's, you have a version of it it's on really steam. good and no uh, it's on steam honestly if you've got uh, a wii it is worth downloading for that like i've i've got a copy on my virtual console and wii and wii u virtual consoles also do sort of save states right so they're pretty handy for that um sarah and i played our way through super mario brothers 3 once like that we just never had enough time to, like, we wanted to play every single level, and we'd, like, alternate on levels, but we never had enough time to, like, sit down and do it all at once, so we just, like, pause it, you know, turn off the Wii, and we'd come back, and there we were. So it was pretty right. handy for that. And that's sure. also a much cheaper way of getting a hold of it than getting the SNES cartridge. Sure, of course. Yeah, which is, is insanely expensive. It's funny. So I will have it one day. Talking about game libraries and tracking and reviewing, Groovy allows you to also set on your list the version of the game you've played. Yes. And so for some games, one or two versions, like a lot of the arcade games that I have on there, like The Simpsons and X-Men, I played on Xbox Live, mm -hmm. and I played on um, the arcades. Right. But I realized when I added Chrono Trigger, mm -hmm. I've played the SNES cartridge, mm -hmm. the DS version, mm -hmm. the PlayStation re-release. Uh-huh. Um... There were, I think there was one other version, and it's like oh, there's wow. I, there was the iOS version, the iOS version I've played. So it's like literally, wow, I've played this game a lot. Yeah. You know, it it's like like you and Shovel Knight, and how Sarah's threatened you, your wife Sarah has threatened you if you buy it again on the Switch because you have it in three other places. Yes, don't don't buy it again. Um, <laughs> and well, hey, on the flip side of things, as far as like uh, I don't know, nerd sins or something. Uh, yes, you haven't played Final Fantasy VI, but you sure played the crap out of Chrono Trigger, and oh, they, yeah. they are, I mean, they are contemporaries as far as, like, oh, yeah. when they came out, and great RPG design, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. so, sure. yeah, whatever, and Final Fantasy VI, like we mentioned, there's so many different ways to uh, to experience it now, uh, you, you'll get it, it'll be I'll in your it backlog, um, it's on my list, maybe I'll buy it before uh, Extra Life, and yeah. I'll play through it. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring my Wii over. We can play it. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, I think ultimately it's funny to me that the running gag has been, uh-oh, Steam sale, my wallet's going to be empty and I'm going to get a bunch of games I'll never play. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just there's media is so accessible now. It's never been better, but it's also kind of never been worse because it's so easy to get overwhelmed by everything that you're surrounded by. Yeah. But I think ultimately for me... What I want to do this year, and you're in agreement, is complete more games and play more games. You know, yeah. I stepped out of, when I first met my wife, before we were even engaged, I lived with her, and most of my stuff still lived with my parents. And so I had my Xbox, I think, but I had no PC, and she had a tiny TV. Um, and so I didn't play a lot of games for many years and felt like I kind of stopped being into video games. Mm -hmm. um, I had my 3DS, but that was it. And then after I got a new computer and, you know, we moved in together, our roommate moved out. Uh, you know, I got the PS4's wedding gift. We got the PS4's wedding gift. Yes. Um, I started playing more games again. I went, oh, no, it was just lack of access. I never stopped liking games. I just didn't have the way to play them. Yeah. And so I'm kind of, as the years have passed, gotten more reinvigorated to deep dive into the this hobby that I love so much. And this podcast has helped with that, too. Because Same. I love talking about games. I mean, literally, I think the first three times we hung out, we spent at least two hours talking about games. And I think one of our wives yelled at us, why don't you guys just make a podcast already? Pretty much. Uh, you know, essentially, as origins go, uh, that's that's how this happened. Yeah. But, you know, I think, I think for me personally, like, I'm really excited to have this goal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I am excited to engage in gaming with this perspective. Same. I, I, I'm happy to come at it with vigor to enjoy it to take those little extra steps that I've talked about and I'm sure you know you listeners you you have your own ways um actually I'm, I'm thinking about like a little outside of the realm of video games there is a blog that I'm a big follower of uh nerd fitness mm -hmm. that it, it's a very fun you know game gamifying your health and whatever and one of the things they talk about is um 
removing obstacles towards good habits and making bad habits harder to do. Um, if in, in the, what they were talking about is like, if you want to exercise more, make the stuff that you would use to exercise like super accessible. If you wanted to run every morning, uh, lay out your workout clothes and sneakers the night before to make it easier if you or whatever else. And so for me, the making those lists and making those little bits of like, all right, how long do these things take to be that little bit of extra effort that I might not be, uh, that I can do if I'm away from the TV or away from gaming is I think going to make it a lot easier for me to to get at those games. So I don't have to deal with that. OK, now what do I play out of these over 500 games? And right. and, and I would love to hear methods and organization uh uh, rubrics and methods that, that that all of you have. I'd love to know what, because I know there's a lot of websites that you can use to uh, log your games. So yeah. love to hear about them. Also, I'm going to request as a homework assignment for you, Jeff, around when this episode comes out, mm -hmm. I would like for you to post a photo on our, a screen cap on our Facebook page of your spreadsheet. I want people to be able to see the insanity that you just described. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I may even like put a view link to it. I don't know. I'll think about it. Okay. Um, yeah, because that would be cool to actually be able to see you update that uh, as it goes. Um, yeah, because it's not done, and I'm still working on it. Um, I also want to give, you know, we like to give our listeners homework and love to hear from you. Tell us how ridiculous your libraries are. Do you have huge physical collections? If so, how many and of what? Do you have huge Steam libraries? You know, what games? Also, are you a person who can play games simultaneously or not? Do you have a huge backlog of stuff that you haven't finished? You know, I can definitely say my list of games played are definitely way higher than the games I've completed. Yes. And um, what what makes it easier or harder for you to finish your backlog? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, as always, for listening. You can find us, of course, uh, anywhere that there is Internet and Internet things. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, you can find me and Jeff both on Tumblr and Twitter and Facebook as well. Um, we always love to hear from you. Uh, we have a log of topics for the show, but if there's anything you ever want to hear us talk about, or if we ever get enough fan mail or questions from you guys, we'll absolutely do a fan episode too. We would love Thank to. Thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah, please add to our backlog of topics. Um, this is all about enjoying the hobby, enjoying the, the culture of it all. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm Jeff Moonen. And I'm Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon. And happy gaming.